Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at ray tracing in the Godot game engine, but not the eye kind of ray tracing, the ear kind. Yeah, we're going to be looking at audio ray tracing. This is a topic I've always found kind of fascinating, to be honest, and it just basically gives you more immersive audio in your game. There's a plugin that makes this super easy to work with, and it's called Raytraced-Audio, a very obvious name. This is from Who Stole My Coffee, it is available under the MIT license up on GitHub, and if you like what he's done, drop him a star. Developers always seem to appreciate that, that and it surfaces their project better better on GitHub, makes it so more people are aware of it, and then hopefully gets more people working on it, using it, etc., and we all win. By the way, this video is being brought to you by Ovani. Ovani Sound are one of my favorite companies for game audio. They make dynamic game soundtracks and sound effects packs. They also have this uh, bundle going on right now, a great deal, Audio Odyssey bundle for like just 20 bucks US. You're getting a ton of music tracks and sound effects tracks, as well as some dynamic soundtrack plugins for various different game engines, including Godot. On top of that, they have have a number of other bundles going on as well. Check out my link down below to get some great game audio and to also support Game From Scratch while you're at it. All right, back to the project. So what we need to do is go ahead and clone this. So just come on in here to the repository. It'll be linked in the linked article down below if you want to go ahead and check that one out. And then what we're going to do is fire up a terminal or a command prompt, whatever you want to call it. And of course, as all things must be, this is done in temp. Just do a git clone and pull that down. All right, so now we've got everything we need to work with. I've already set up a very basic project here. What you see is we have a floor. Uh, we have that is made out of a box that has a collision shape. Nothing special going on here. Otherwise, what we've also got is a character creator, uh, a character controller. I mean, I use this one right here to search for character controller. Grab this guy right there. Add that into your project. Once you've downloaded it, enable the character controller like so, and then you can quickly get things up and running. Basically, come on into it. So go add-ons, character controller, examples, main, player, drop that player into your world at the root, and boom, you now have a character controller ready to go. It's gonna make the rest of this demonstration a whole lot easier. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is set a camera up where that character is. What I'm gonna do is make the children editable, find the head like so, and then to that we're adding a child of type camera 3D like this, and boom, we now have a character controller in our world. There you see, and we can run around, and really that's about it. I can jump off the edge of the world, so young. All right, so now we have that. Now what we want to do is add our audio to the world. And that is done using that plugin we downloaded earlier. So what I'm going to do is go into my temp directory where all things must exist. You will find the retraced audio folder in there and just grab the add-ons folder. Take that add-ons folder into your project and paste it. So there you now have ray traced audio in the add-ons folder as well. Come on back over here and you're going to go project, project settings, plugins, ray traced audio, and turn that on. So now we are ready to go. What we need though is a little bit of audio. So I'm gonna do is grab a couple of them. These are from that um, download I told you about, that bundle that's available from Avani. You can use whatever you want. These are good examples though. So here we've got mutated being sounds like ro roars and such in the world. So we're just gonna come up here to our resource. We're gonna go here, grab a growl, grab something a little bit on the larger side. So here, growl, idle, and we'll drop that into the resource. Boom, so there it has now imported that. And we're also gonna go ahead back to that folder and we'll add some music that we'll just play on a loop here as well. So ambient music, uh, pick a track. The cool thing about uh, their tracks, by the way, is they have these different intensities for them. So if you've got like a horror game and you wanna have like more intense as it goes on, you have that capability there as well. So I'm gonna grab a random soundtrack here as well. With both of those selected, what I'm gonna wanna do though is go back to import and I'm gonna switch loop mode, make sure that it is set to forward and import that in. So that I'm just gonna do for both of them, just keeps these soundtracks looping over and over and over. All right, there we go. So now we've got uh, our character controller in the world. Uh, uh, and now we can go ahead and add a sound effect in. With that plugin enabled earlier on that we set up, what we can now do is come on over back to our scene like so. So we now have that player in there uh, with the camera set up. This, this thing adds a couple of new notes to the world. The plugin that we set up earlier on, the, the Ray Traced Audio plugin. So with my camera, I'm gonna set up. So this needs to happen. We're gonna go ahead and add a child node to that one. And if we search for Ray 
traced, we're going to find we've got two new nodes, the Godot type nodes. One is for the audio, one is for receiving the audio. So basically, this is your ear in the world. This is where most of the logic happens. You need to add at least one of them. So boom, we're going to attach it to our camera. So now this is going to pick up the ray traced audio that we might want to deal with. And now we can do something very simple. Uh, so for example, here, let's go back. So our player should be done for now. So let's just select our player move it over a little bit. I think I'm facing the right direction. We'll find out in just a second. Uh, and then what we can do is add an audio source to the world. So we're going to do as I'm going to do this, I'm going to add a um, mesh instance 3D first uh, of type. I don't know, let's just make these balls or something. So here, uh, a new spherical mesh like so. Uh, so we'll just position that way we can visualize where our object actually is. And that as the parent. So what I'm going to do is again, ray traced. And now we're going to add a ray traced audio player. This is the audio in your world. And you can go ahead and create that one. Uh, so create that there. And then you can set up where it should be. So let's do that growling effect like this. And we'll drop that into our stream like so. And then when we run our game, we can go ahead and auto play that. So like this, run this. So now you're going to see that circle, the sphere of the world. So it's just a growling monster in the world. Nothing special happening so far, but that is how you set up and listen to the ray traced audio. It's very much like what you do any other positional audio, but now what we're gonna do is make our world a little bit more interesting. So with this select, let's move this over here slightly. And now we're going to have some occlusion in our world. So the ray tracing, what the ray tracing does basically is it sends rays out into to the world from your ear and it locates audio sources that you can hear. This enables you to do things like muffling uh, and so on. We'll get back to that in just a sec. But first, I'm going to need to do a little bit of work. So I'm going to come up here, uh, just create a blank node like this. We will call this uh, wall. Uh, and then with wall, what we will do is create a static body. Uh, 3D, all right, there. And then inside of that, we're going to create a CSG box 3D like so. Uh, and set up our wall. So boom, there is our wall. Let's make it kind of blocky so that it'll get in the way of our audio. And let's see if I can get the right one at the right time. There we go. All right, there we go. So we've got, we got a wall. All right, there we go. Now, obviously this is, actually let's make that a little bit higher. So we want, we want this to occlude a lot of audio, but we want to also want to be able to walk around it. All right, here we go. So this is a static body. Uh, so obviously you can see we need a collision map for that. So let's come up here, create the collision shape and boom, there we go. So there we've got our wall in the world like so. And then we have our monster sound. So monster sound is right on this side. And then we got this wall that should get rid of some of this. Actually, let's make that wall just a little bit bigger. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's just go that way. That way. Okay, there we go. So now what we should be able to do is go ahead, check the same thing out. So here is my circle. There's the, the, the epicenter of our sound. And then... So that is muffling the noise that you would get from the audio. So let me go ahead and what we're going to do, we're going to start that over again. So let's just take this. We will move our audio source. So our this guy right here. Let's move that a little bit closer to the wall so you get a bit more of what the effect is doing. So let's go here, load it. So here, now it's right, right there. And we'll go on the other side of our wall. And here it's being not only muffled, but occluded as well. And that is being done by casting rays into the world. Let's do another audio source on the opposite side. So that's where our soundtrack will come in. So what we're gonna do uh, is basically, let's just, uh, here, I'll do this the lazy way. Control D, bring that across over here, that guy, and this one instead will be our song. All right, so let's go ahead, I'll play that in the world. So there you go. As we get closer to it, oh, yeah, okay, no, it, it's auto playing. There you go. So there is the sound of one side, and then we move over here. We've got our music, but you hear our roar is being muffled. As 
got nothing to do with proximity to the safe. So here you see we're getting closer to this wall. Over here, again, we got our music. Come back over here. You slowly hear the monsters. So we've got monsters in rooms. You can deal with it that way. And again, boom, back here to the monster. Really cool stuff. Another thing I want you to notice here is our player here. Remember I put that audio listener on the player? So in terms of what this is actually doing, so here is the ray traced audio. You can notice this handles muffling, echoing, and ambience. By the way, you'll also notice if you come down here, there is uh, a reverb and a ray traced ambient sound. So I could come here to, for example, uh, our uh, second player, our music track right there, and I could set that to use the ambient track like so. Uh, that is explained uh, over here exactly what the two different do. Uh, so you see the two different buses. The reverb bus uh, used for much larger reverbs in large enclosed rooms compared to smaller ones. Ambient bus controls the strength and pan of sounds coming from the outside. So if you want to control how these work, those two different buses are available for you. Now, if I go ahead again, so quick demo here with the, the monster growling. So we'll go we'll just sprint over here. So you hear how muffled it is? Okay, now if I come back here and we actually turn off the, so on the audio listener over here, so where did the audio listener go? Audio listener right here. If I turn muffling off and echoing off, and say I'll leave ambient on. Okay, so there. Uh, muffle and echo are off. That muffling effect, it's as if this plugin doesn't do anything. There, so you can see it's, it's full sound, so, so it's not doing that muffling. But that illustrates exactly what this plugin does. It kind of, again, gives you the ability to easily place things in the world and then not have to create dead zones or different audio players for different effects. You literally just put it in, you turn the muffling on, the echoing on, etc., and you set up your world environment and it uses audio ray tracing to create it for you. And then once again, so you hear the, you hear the monster. So here you can see that that wall is literally just like maybe two meters or one meter away from it. But if I go on the opposite side of that wall, we barely hear it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Ray Traced Audio in Godot. This is available as a package, by the way. If you go back over to Godot like so, go to the asset library and search for, I think Ray Tracing will get you there. Uh, yeah, Ray Traced Audio. It's available there as well. I think the one on GitHub is slightly more up to date, so that's why I went ahead and used it. But you can get it started a lot easier, basically just straight out from the asset library as well. Real cool project, in my humble opinion. Again, I love the idea of Ray Traced Audio. It's one of those things going all the way back to like EAX back in the day for the people that are as old as I am. Again, MIT license. If you do like what he's done here, do drop him a star. By the way, once again, if you are looking for some soundtracks or audio, sound effects, etc. for your games, do check out Avani. Link is down below and it does help support the channel. So ladies and gentlemen, that Ray Traced Audio in Godot from Who Stole My Coffee, a username which, by the way, I absolutely love. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. And again, you like what he did, drop him a star. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.